Hawkman comes up. Raymond dunks it. Now straight down the lane, slams that one home. What's up, 2K fam? Welcome to the NBA 2K League's The Post Up. I'm Autumn Johnson alongside my co-host Dirk, and we're coming at you as always every week to catch you up and give you the inside scoop of what's happening in the NBA 2K League. The Coinbase 3v3 Switch Open is entering its first week of remote bracket play, and the teams are eager to submit their spot in next week's in-person bracket play. That's right, we are back at District E next week to crown our Switch Open champion, and one team will walk away with $150,000. Dirk, talk to me. Who do you like in the Switch Open? Ah, you know what, on for me, it's got to be Knicks Gaming. I know NetsGC is watching this and turning their head and saying, how does the guy who predict us to win three versus three do this? But they start off 6-0 in group play. What Stick is playing like the best lockdown in the entire league right now. So I got to go with them to potentially take the switch open. Oh, okay. I see you. Knicks Gaming. I mean, they've been making a case the past couple of weeks that they are the team to beat. Competition is starting to heat up as our players have their sights set on returning to that circle stage and some looking to make their District E debut. Until then, we have to catch our viewers up at home on how we got here. Let's run it back. The first play this week comes from Bucks Gaming and of course, it's Cooks from way downtown for the game winner. And here on a Tuesday in week number two, still in group play, jump into bracket play next week. Before we go to DC, we turn kind of champions. Oh my goodness! Oh. Man, Cooks continues to show out every single time for Bucks Gaming. They did drop their first ever series, but they got the win there. Number two this week comes from Pacers Gaming, and it's just displaying why Pacers Gaming has been so hot here with his fadeaway three. And now, T-Wolves Gaming have taken the lead just by one. After some of that defense, getting the turnovers on the inbound. Can they get? Another stop here. Chess fading away. This is for the ball game. Chess puts it. Oh man, if Chess can start to get it going like this, Pacers game is going to be looking good going out there into the switch open. Third up, we got Grizz Game, and it's the dynamic duo of point guard CP linking up with Logic Stark for the corner three. As it's 20 to 11, Grizz Game he should be able to close this one out as soon as I say that. Reg almost got a steal. They get it to CP with his sharp takeover. Got to play all the way up if you're Bray. Over to Logic Stark from downtown. Logic Stark has been a hot shooter, a sleeper out of there from the corner of Grace Gaming all season long. You can't leave that man open. Last up on the list is the mighty Pistons GT with Ant setting up their talented rookie Connor as he bangs a corner three for the win after securing the offensive board and keeping the possession alive. Go for a sweep. Huge, huge win for Warriors Gaming Squad back to back tonight, getting a big 20 points to really cement their spot. They would actually jump over Cavs Legion and Wizards <laughs> District Gaming, tie themselves with Hawks Allen GC. Man, the man's already been player of the week. Maybe he's trying to go for that, but yeah, I know he's got rookie of the year in sight right now for him. What an amazing week we just had to wrap up our remote group play as we start to pivot over to remote bracket play. Man, the 3v3 portion of the season is flying by and certain teams are starting to emerge as favorites heading into the tail end of the Coinbase 3v3 Switch Open. I'm going to assist it back to my guy Dirk to break down what's new in the 2K League. Appreciate it, Autumn. Things kind of just going how they did over towards the slam over here and towards the switch. we got Pistons GT, Bucks Gaming, T-Wolves Gaming currently leading the pack in the switch open. The top 10 teams as it stands is currently there. Pistons GT, your slam open champions, are still holding strong at that number one spot. It is crucial to make deep runs in these tournaments to try to solidify yourself. You can see the runner-ups there, T-Wolves Gaming, still holding on to number two. But we jump down to six and seven. Dukes Gaming, Warriors Gaming Squad finally starting to get into that rhythm. Two teams that we didn't get to see out there on stage at District E trying to make a push here to try to rack up those points to make sure that we will see them in the playoffs and that they will avoid the steal open. But just to remind it to everybody watching, these can change on a day-to-day, game-to-game basis when we're talking about a lot of things to go through. And of course, with bracket play coming up next week, we'll take a look later in the show to give you all the details of what's going to be coming up over the next couple weeks.
Let's go. Hey, we've seen the top teams and the new groupings made for the 3v3 Switch Open. Our teams are locked in and ready to return to District E and walk away not only champions, but with a cash prize of $150,000. You got that right, Autumn. The time is now for you to be able to get any necessary points to avoid the still open at all costs for your chance to get into the 3v3 playoffs. Playoffs? Playoffs? Already? Hey, if you're one of those teams who have not yet secured a spot in the playoff bracket, the still open is the opportunity for you. Whichever two teams who make it to the finals of the still open will buy themselves playoff seats to contend for the 3v3 chip. After the break, the Red Hot Pacers Gaming joins us on the post-up, and we tap into another episode of Bonded by Ball with T-Wolves Gaming. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the NBA 2K League's The Post-Up. I'm Autumn Johnson, joined by my co-host, Dirk. Y'all, Pacers Gaming was on fire to start the 3v3 Switch Open, posting a 4-0 start to begin the tournament. They're looking to defend their Switch Open title from last season and prove they are one of the top teams in 3v3. After a complete roster rebuild and missing out on the Slam Open title, it seems the Switch Open could not have come at a better time for Pacers Gaming. Let's tap in with Pacers Gaming to hear their latest perspective. Pacers Gaming, we are incredibly excited to have you join us here on the Post Up. Welcome and thank you for making some time to sit down with us. Thanks so much, Autumn. We're excited to be here, share a little bit about our team so far and uh, looking forward to it. Cody, could you share a little bit about the all new Pacers roster for the 2023 season? Yeah, definitely. So our roster this season, as you can see, is different, very different from what we've had the last few years. The guys sitting in this room really checked a lot of boxes when we were in the draft room and, and started thinking about how we wanted to build this team back up. And, um, you know, we're, we're excited. Chess Harris from our broadcast team was quoted as saying, we're seeing Chess step into a star role in the NBA 2K League. On top of that, you're currently leading the 3v3 team and scoring with 9.3 points per game, as well as assists with three assists per game. What clicked for you this season? Um, what clicked is my teammates are, um, are really, <clears throat> they make it really easy on me. Like, um, we over here, we pride ourselves on defense. And it's not really like normal in threes. Like it's usually in threes, offense is the easy part, but like we have a really, really good defense. So we pride ourselves on defense over here and like getting as many stops as possible, which puts me in the best position to win the game. Jay Snags, you've been in the lab this season, sitting in for all 69 of Pacers gaming matchups this season. As a rookie, I'm sure it must be exciting, but also incredibly valuable to be in this situation. Putting in this many hours on the court, talk to us a little bit about how your first year in the league has been for you. First year in the league has been literally a movie. So we started <laughs> off over five, and there was a lot of like heads down, you know, it wasn't great, the feeling wasn't great, but as you progress, we started to win, and that mentality just, you know, as long as you have a good mentality, it'll get you through all the ups and downs in this league. So I'll say my first year has yeah, literally been a movie. <laughs> have there been any moments with your veteran teammates that have helped you grow into this role? Obviously, all individually, they all helped me being vets, but I'd say Cody probably the biggest help. Uh, he's been preaching to us all season about mentality, having a positive mindset, even taking me to the side. Yo, if you have that positive mindset, it's going to get you far. Your teammates are going to thrive off of it. And even game plan wise, like he has like list of us or a list of things on a board of what we should do. And as long as we do it, we win. So I say he's been a huge help. Big Rain, second year pro, and you are crushing it currently. 2.4 rebounds per game while shooting 65% from three. You've been one of the best power forwards in 3v3 so far this season. How do you feel that your role here helps contribute to success for the Switch and hopefully into the 3v3 playoff seat? Um, I think the biggest thing that I bring uh, is experience for the team. Uh, you know, I've been in those big moments in my second year. Uh, I've been in those tough moments, so I feel like that experience really helps us and helps us win, keeps us composure, and um, I think that's just the biggest thing, just experience. Thanks again, Pacers Gaming, for taking the time and joining us on the Post Up. We are excited to see you guys finish strong and hope to see you at District E very soon. Thanks so much for having us. It was fun chatting with you guys. We're, we're coming for another Switch banner.
All in Pacers Gaming has been in their bag here in the Switch Open. They've knocked off Wizards District Gaming and T-Wolves Gaming. And after the historic run that they had last year, where they went undefeated, not dropping a game all the way to the Grand Finals, where they lost one game, it's no surprise that all of a sudden the Switch Open tournament, is it becoming Pacers Gaming? I couldn't agree more, Dirk. I mean, listen, Pacers Gaming is here to stay as they look to repeat as Switch Open champs and put themselves in a prime position to reach the 3v3 playoffs, don't you think? A hundred percent, Autumn, because when you're looking at making a run of the bracket play, that's what can get you into that point. But every series of tournament win at this point always matters. And we heard from Shifty Kai with T-Wolves Gaming on last week's episode and the relationship that he shares with his teammate, Bear to Peace. Wilson helps our players and teams find new ways to bond and build that chemistry. T-Wolves Gaming displays what it means to be bonded by ball. Our team chemistry, I feel like, is at its highest. We're usually together probably 90% of the day. Our bond just comes together whenever we get on the game. Our new teammate is Clamp. We're having lots of fun with him. TB, I can relate to a lot since we play similar positions, similar play styles. The feeling's amazing to be a pro. Obviously, you're competing at the highest level and playing against some of the best of the best. I don't think it's one clear-cut leader, but I think like we all are leaders in our own way. Flo got the little slick, funny jokes here and there, so. Our rookie, Clampism, he's my roommate. I love living with him. He's a grinder on the game. It's been great to get to know him. One of my favorite things about being on the T-Wolves organization is definitely just the team chemistry we've had over the past three years. My point guard, Bear to Beast, super outgoing, jokester, all around great guy. My team is pretty funny. Slaughter is, he's kind of like that old uncle. He's the old uncle. He's got a lot of funny jokes. When he laughs, you actually know your joke is funny. Kai's goofy. He acts like he's tough, but he, he's a goofy kid. He always laughing. He got the hysterical laugh. His, you, you can hear this dude five miles away laughing. Everybody know Bear the Beast. He's a high energy guy, funny. Yeah, our team chemistry is great. We'll go to the movies. We'll just do a lot of off the stuff court. I think that builds our chemistry for on the court, and that's why we usually play so well. We are one week away from being back at the state of the art District E facility to close out our 3v3 switch open. And there's still so much on the line as another team will walk away with the cash prize of $150,000. Remote bracket play is getting underway this week, and teams are looking to solidify their spot in next week's in-person bracket play. Coming up after this break, we dive into some more 2K League lingo and look ahead for what's to come in 3v3. Stay locked in. Green in the shot is, you know, you... Hit it at the perfect release, you know your timing, you know it's open, and you know it's going in. So when you green a shot, it just means it's going to go in, 100%. Faking one way and then coming back the other way, but the pass is like dragging you to an open spot in the court. When you're off ball and you're moving, and like the pass at the same time drags them, so like the defender's going one way, you're going the other way, and you get wide open, you, that's what we call Dex now. A beef game is just a mad competitive game with people who really don't like each other. A beef game to me is, you know, obviously a game that you just can't lose. Um, it's a game that from the jump, everybody's on their toes, everybody's locked in, and they know that at the end of the day, we cannot lose that game. Blitzing is when you predict the way someone's going to go and you rush them and get like a body up steal or, or a bum steal. You just beat them to their spot and just like steal the ball from them, that's pretty much all blitzing is. Baited is basically when a pass looks open or you make a pass look open, but it's really not, and then you steal the pass. Baited is when you're playing either a lane or playing between two people and you guess correctly. Dot or steamer is like a really good pass. Um, like once again, if you come off the screen and you expect the defender to step up, um, obviously they're not just gonna let the roll be open every time. A steamer is similar to the dot. It goes right over somebody's head, right, right past their arm. It's a really good pass to an open shooter. You know, something that just happens in the game that's really not supposed to. It's just something unfortunate, kind of. Fluke is kind of like uh, we didn't get like a steal. They shouldn't have gotten. We make a shot. They shouldn't. Have, they shouldn't have made. Flukes are common. Welcome back to the NBA 2K Leagues, the post up. I'm 
Autumn Johnson with my guy, my co-host Dirk, and we just tapped into some of our 2K terms the players use, and honestly, I'm still getting used to some of our terms ourselves as we look ahead to our in-person bracket play next week at District E. There are quite a few things you need to know to get prepared for what's to come in the 3v3 Switch Open, so get your popcorn ready. Dirk, take it away. Yeah, we start off with the switch open bracket play being remote. And then if you're able to go deep enough into the tournament, we will see you actually out there at District E. But this is where it all starts. The team's battling out for $150,000 in prize money. And a slam open was a movie. It is going to be so hard to top what we ended up seeing out there in District E in our debut week. But if there's a tournament to do it, it's 100% going to be the switch open. And of course, each time that we talk about getting to this point in bracket play, we got to show love to the amateur teams that are going to be competing. Now, a few notable ones glitchy they've already out there on the stage we got the glow navy glow skeetos and g1 longhorns who were able to take the league by storm with bullet the hype the energy that he was constantly bringing maybe we'll get to see him out there in district e for him to make his stage debut but we are back in dc april 26th through the 29th for in-person bracket play with the switch open and just to remind everybody out there it's still not too late to secure a playoff spot this is kind of a make it or break it turn up for some of these teams going through the team that are in that 11th, 12th, and 13th seed still have a path to success to be able to get in towards the playoffs. Even then, the still open is not a death sentence. That is your next chance to be able to emerge victorious and try to solidify yourself in the 3v3 playoffs. Ooh, that 150k bag. Amateurs trying to steal the pros bag. And of course, trash talk through it all. Hey, sign me up. Dirk, last time the pros stepped into District E, it was the debut of our new home. This time around, the new facility is broken in and one team is looking to hoist up the second ever 3v3 championship trophy at the end of this mode's final stretch. And Autumn, it is way too tough to call who is going to come out victorious and be the 3v3 champion. It has been so competitive this year, probably way more competitive than anybody could have thought coming in. On our first episode, I said Nets GC, they were going to take three versus three. They're struggling right now, Autumn, but a 3v3 has taught me anything over the past couple years is never count any team out. That's right. But hey, what do you think is going to be the most important thing for all teams as we get closer to playoff contention? Yeah, it's really just trying to scrape together not just the game wins, but the series wins is the most important part with a tournament structure like this. But Autumn teams can be thankful with this, with the new format this year. Every single team will make bracket play, regardless if you go in there with zero wins or you go in there with eight wins. It doesn't really matter. This is your last chance to really try to make that final push to make sure that you're not going to be one of those teams competing in that still open. Again, series wins is key to be able to get you those points. But coming up after this break, we bring back our at and confession cam series where we talk to players about what it's like to move away from home go into the team market stay with us welcome back to the nba 2k leagues the post up i'm autumn johnson here alongside my guy Dirk. And while our players are living out their dream of being a professional 2K League player, being away from their families and loved ones could be tough. AT&T displays the true feelings of what it's like for some of our 2K pros to be away from home through something we like to call Confession Cam. Moving from market, playing the 2K League is, it's like a blessing, but also like kind of like, at the same time because you're leaving your family for six months it's tough because you know i got a family back home so i mean just makes it hard for me i'm here to get my work done and then go back me i'm a father knowing that i have the ability to make sure that we're in a better place than we were in yesterday always is extra motivation and a boost for me to want to go get it i still live with my parents so it's like leaving them and my sister and all the dogs i have five dogs at home i miss them but i talk to them every day on facetime it's little stuff like that to make it easier while we're out. It's definitely been a, you know, a challenge being away from family for the first time. FaceTime calls my mom, dad, you know, letting them know how everything's going up here, off the game, on the game, you know, and and definitely with them supporting, like they tune into every game. So it's been great in, in that aspect. Actually, my whole family just came up this past weekend for the first time. They came to District E, watched us play, you know, spent some time with them, so that was nice. It's really cool for me leaving my country and coming into this one. I've always wanted to go to America. This is actually my first time out of my own country, so it's a big change up, but I'm enjoying it. Everyone's, uh, 
you know, taking me in with open arms and treating me like I belong here. So hopefully the rest of my time here goes smooth. Honestly, Honor, for some of these players, especially the rookies, they're on the younger side of things. So it's got to be tough for them to be moving from city to city. Some going from all the way out of the country, coming to the United States for the season. But with that being said, it does make those in-person weeks that much more special when you can see all families piling in to support the players, kids, husbands, fathers, wives, you name it, as they get to showcase their skills there on the main stage. Absolutely, Derek. And I know back when I played sports, whenever my family was in the stands, my game would hit a whole nother level when I saw their faces, heard their voices cheering for me. I mean, hey, you got to show up for your fam, right? Autumn, I wish I could relate to that story in some sort of way. I like my family being there, but I have two European parents and they would yell at the rest. They would yell at the players. They would yell at the family. So I actually wasn't the, the biggest fan of having my parents in attendance. Hey, you always got to have that one family, though, that's always in the crowd. They ride hard for their kid. Mine was honestly the same way. But anyways, we are inching closer to another 3v3 tournament in the books. The Switch Open kicks off remote bracket play this week, and teams are hoping to punch their ticket into next week's in-person bracket play at none other than our 2023 home of the NBA 2K League season, District E. That's right, Autumn. The time is now. We have brought it up all episode long. You have to go out there. If you're one of these teams on the outside looking in, you have to make this miracle run in the Switch Open to secure points to avoid the steal. But this is where the intensity starts to ramp up at this stage in the season. But you can tune in every week to hear the latest and most up-to-date information in the NBA 2K League. Follow us here on all social platforms at NBA 2K League to keep up all the day-to-day -day happenings as well. For now, I'm Dirk, that's Autumn from our cast and crew. Until next time, 2K fans.